This is Bruce Tremper with the Forest Service Utah Avalanche Center. We're here along the Park City Ridge Line, actually on peak 10420, right at the head of Big Cottonwood Canyon. And we have lots of loose snow on the snow surface. Uh, this A little bit of this fell yesterday, but then there's just a lot of loose faceted snow left over that's just rotted on the surface for the last few days. And then we get into harder snow, harder slab, and then we get into some layers of old faceted snow that's fairly stout um, when you get down there. This didn't blow around yesterday, although there was a lot of wind. You can see wind up along the ridge top there, but the wind didn't blow down here. So all this snow remains in place. We're expecting strong winds tomorrow from the south, from that way. And so it should erode all this snow and deposit it on to the north facing slope. And this snow is just kind of mushing down here. I have to pound on it pretty hard breaking on a layer of faceted snow down at this level, but it takes quite a few taps to get it going. It's uh, mostly dormant at this point, but with a lot of weight on it, we could reactivate that layer. Here's the difference between wind eroded snow and wind deposited snow. Over there on the upwind side of this ridge, it looks like a sandblasted and wind deposited. And then down on this side, we have smooth, rounded snow. So that's why the wind is deposited snow. You can see that there where I stomped with my ski, uh, that little whaleback uh, wind pillow, as it's called. So that's where the wind is deposited. Smooth, rounded, pillow-shaped, lens-shaped. That's the dangerous snow, right after the wind blows. Eroded snow, sandblasted snow, that's much safer snow right after the wind blows. It's another good example of wind loading. It uh, eroded the left side of that ridge as we're looking at. That's actually the top of Park City Resort, the side of bounds. And it loaded or deposited on the right side, right above the Gardens Pass Road there. That's the spot that usually breaks out and avalanches down on the road. Big thick wind pillows, lens shaped, and uh, it's pretty obvious to see what's going on in a situation like that. Here's a nice whaleback shape and a lens shape. And of course, it's cracking underneath my skis here as I'm walking along. Look at that. Broke out a little thin slab right there. If this is on a steeper slope, then it could take me for a ride. If this crack forms up above me and I'm on the wrong side of the crack, then I'm off to the races and I'm at the mercy of wherever this thing takes me. Right now, the thing about wind slabs, they can be very, very localized. Like the wind didn't even blow here at all. You can see all the old snowmobile tracks, nothing's covered up, and then all the snow is just very soft here. So no wind drifting at all here. Whereas we just came from right up there on the ridge top where there's lots of fresh wind slabs and then you get out of them very quickly when you get into more wind sheltered terrain. Wind slabs can be very, very localized. So most of this is pretty safe terrain here as we can see from the bazillions of tracks in here and nobody's triggering anything. Here we are in the thick north facing woods and you can see that the wind has been blowing in here. Look at all these ridges of wind deposit. The way you can tell which direction the wind is blowing is you see it's the tails on the downwind side of the tree. So the left side of this picture here is the downwind side and it eroded it out on the upwind side there on the right. And so all these tails are facing downwind. So I'm pointing my camera straight into the wind. This wind came from the northwest, west to northwest. Um, the slope is facing straight north. So even in these thick trees, you can get wind deposits.